There are some big events on the horizon for this guy. The head basketball coach of the South Carolina Gamecocks, Lamont Paris, has been kind enough to spend some of his time with us. But, Coach, before we get to basketball, I didn't realize we were running a spot about sheepdog herding. Are you going to give it a give it a crack on April the 5th out there somewhere in Lexington? You want to go herd some sheep sheep, dogs? sheep dog herding? Uh, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's up my alley. But, that's uh, it caught me off guard too, man. I was like, I might, what? I, might watch, I might be interested in watching it for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so, no doubt. That's <laughs> great. Uh, no. Sounds like it would be some high comedy. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize we had a meeting this morning and Phil was talking about promoting this event that was coming to town and I had no idea that it involved sheepdog herding. So uh wow. that's wow. that. April It's Phil. an eclectic mix down there in Lexington. It's an eclectic mix. Yeah, quite, quite a thing. <laughs> well, what day is well, the come- national championship? Is that April sixth or seventh? Yeah, um, that's that Monday. Somewhere around somewhere. there, usually. Let's, let's yeah. hope you're not available to hurt any yeah, sheep dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How about that's that, Coach? Thanks, man. Right, Thanks man. for being here. Appreciate it. Yeah, no it. problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, sir. Go ahead, JC. I know you were anxious to get out, get something out. So. Well, I got to, I got to ask this right off the top Go because ahead. I, I watched fun. the uh, the when you were did did an interview with Jessica Jackson, and you're riding in the uh, the golf cart, and you said yeah. this, and it was you talked about hip hop peaking. In the '90s, and I know you're yeah. a Gen Xer like we all are. Yeah. So, can you kind of expand on that for our audience? And also, see, I took that, and I've I've got this whole conspiracy now that mu- not only that, but music in general, kind of yeah. got as good as it could be. Yeah. You know, can you expand on that for our audience that may have missed that? Because I yeah. I yeah. found that so fascinating. My my the, the, my belief is that with hip hop particularly, there have been these phases. Right. There was an introductory phase. There was another phase where it got accepted and then and it wasn't great, but it was accepted. Um, and then in the next phase was when it was perfected. And and I think in the 90s, it was perfected. Whether you were whether you liked guys that were going to rap really fast, like Twista, whether you liked people that were going to like the chopped and screwed version of rap, whether you liked the the ones that were lyricists, whether it was Beats with Timberland, whether it was whatever with Jay-Z, Pac, Biggie, uh, Nas. Uh, I think if you look at all of it, Eminem, uh, even Lil Wayne was like the, the, the tail end. He was a young one at that time when he was doing it. I think if you look at that time of hip hop, it was it was perfected. And then as you moved forward, the next group, what else could they do? I mean, they have some good beats, but you got into mumble rapping. Uh, you got into sound effects being counted as lyrics. Like mm-hmm. I hear a song and it'll say, skirt, skirt. And that'll be, a, that's counted as a lyric. Uh, <laughs> that's <counted> as- <laughs> uh, These days. I think it got perfected. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go from all those guys? Where are you going to go from all those guys? And I think if you were a B-list rapper right then, if you were a B-list rapper that really never made it, there's somebody that we don't really even know, right? He's never really got – and he was – today he'd be the greatest. Right now he'd be the greatest rapper ever to to rap right now. So, you know, I don't – I'm not judging them for that. They came out. It's, it's, it's it just was too bad. It's too bad. It got perfected, and there was nowhere else to go with mm-hmm. rap after those guys were were doing their thing. That, I love that's, that. That's, that's amazing. Pretty, well, coach, and I agree uh, completely. <laughs> we 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 appreciate you for joining us, man. You have a good day. We've covered rap and sheepdog herding with you. We'll we'll let you go about your business <laughs> I mean, now. How many, yeah, how many? Whoever would have thought you could blend those two into the same. You probably had a four or five minute segment. Yeah, so, I get Welcome I, to the show, Coach. Welcome he's to the show. Tell Mike the base when he gets off the, this program, don't ever schedule that for me again. <laughs> uh, he, no way did you. So, so do you have a? Is there a rapper on the team? Do you have somebody in the? Because I know you get in there and dance with these guys. Is there somebody in there who can carry a carry a beat or? or yeah, no? um, we got a couple guys that you know. Michi Johnson is he's musically inclined. I think he's really good on the drums. You know, Gigi Jackson was like that last year, too. He was incredible. Gigi was incredible on the drums. Michi's really good on the drums, too. He can sing a little bit. I'm not sure. I mean, I think he raps some. 
Um, maybe Zach Davis. I think those would be the two that come to mind. If I had to pick who would it be the ones that I would probably question their ability to wrap the most, I'd like to see what it looked like if Josh Gray, if somebody just gave him a beat and said, I need a couple bars right off the top of your head. That would be interesting to see how that went. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a couple guys. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not around once they start breaking it down. I'm not in there too much that I leave the locker room for those guys, but, um, but those would be the usual suspects. I think for me, I think this actually leads into a lot of what we probably wanted to talk to you about today. This, this, this team is really unique in the fact that you had to go to the portal and you had to bring a bunch of dudes in. Uh, that's the name of the game today. Right. Coach. And, um, yeah. and you found a way to make it work. How, how, how'd you, how'd you do that? Cause that's, I mean, look at Arkansas. It ain't yeah. working. Yeah, you've made that. You've made it click. Uh, How's it? How did you do yeah. that? I think I, I think I think a couple of things we've had. a. have had a lot of transfers when I was at Chattanooga. We had a bunch of transfers, I think. Um, and Mus has had a bunch of transfers before when he was at Nevada. And I think when it comes to transfers, I think you have to have the role available that they're seeking. I think those two. I think there has to be an alignment on those two things. Um, then I think. The, the, the basketball character of that person has to be high, of all those guys has to be high. And I say basketball character versus the regular character. You can have – there are people that are going to be a good employee, a good neighbor, a good father. They have good character, and they have bad basketball character. They can't share the ball. They can't be coached. They can't do anything that doesn't involve themselves. And that's bad basketball character. And I just think you have to avoid bad basketball character at all costs. Uh, if you do, because unless they change the rules, there's still only one ball. So five guys can't shoot it at the same time. Um, and so we've I think those have been the things that have been at the forefront of, of, of what we've looked at. And I think I said it already, but I think the main thing is that the guys that we bring in, our version, our vision of what their role will be and their vision of what their role will be are really pretty close. I think that's really important. I, I know JC is going to pepper you in just a second on the, on net rankings. I'm, I know he wants to pick your brain on that, but yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm going to get in front of him and ask you a question that's going to lead right into it. And JC, so I'll tee you up here a little bit. Th th this program, like you go back to, to November, everybody has these games. You, you have, you know, close wins over teams, no disrespect to any of these guys like Charleston yeah. Southern, somebody like that. But yeah. a win is a win in November. You're trying to figure out who you are, especially when you have transfers. So if you can evaluate today, March 12th, from yeah. where you were three months ago, where do you yeah. think you've improved the most? Where do you think you've maybe improved the least? Maybe maybe something yeah. you'd still like to see a little bit better going into the tournament. Yeah, I mean, I think we've improved tremendously in a lot of different ways. And that's the that's the part of this whole thing, not to not to steal any thunder from the net comp conversation but no yeah I, I think uh i think one flaw in the net is that teams are going to grow and i think as we move forward you're going to have more growth because you have more new pieces um and so you either are who you are in november at the same time you are in in march that's usually not very good uh but you're going to grow and so we've grown in so many different ways just what we're doing defensively we've had lineup changes you know Colin Murray Boyles was out with with uh, uh, mono early on in the season Stephen Clark did an incredible job of filling in at that spot and, and and leading us to a bunch of wins and so we've we've just continually I think as a unit we've we've just continued our overall uh, general the, the way we're able to generate shots tweaking what we do based on we got some in some interesting defenses in this league right? Like you're going to play Missouri, you're not going to run a bunch of plays. They're going to make, you're going to play uh, uh, Mississippi State and and Texas A&M are both really good defensive teams, but you know they're going to take the middle completely away. They're going to force you to baseline. They're going to trap it on the baseline, so your other teams don't even let you throw an, an entry pass to the wing. So running traditional offense is very difficult in this league. You're going to come down and do a couple of things and get it. It's very difficult in this league. Um, that is, you're almost forced to just come down, run a ball screen, and see what happens. And our guys aren't built that way, so we got to finagle around it to try to another, find another way that these guys can play on a level uh, uh, playing field. Um, and so we've been we've been able uh, we've been able to do that. But we've grown a lot. I think the area that I still would like to see more growth is just in our ability to uh, to make shots. 
to make shots as simple as that sounds like, you know, the guys got to, they got to play loose and, and go out there with swag and, and shoot the ball and, and expect it to go in it when they shoot it. I think, I think that's the area that we're under achieving the most. We have good shooters. We do. And one day we're going to unleash it. We did it in, we made 18 threes. You don't, you can't accidentally make 18 threes. We made 18 threes in one game. You think about that generating 54 points in one game, just from the three point line. We have the capacity to do that. We haven't done it on a consistent basis. So hopefully as we move forward into the postseason play, we'll take the lid off and a couple of these guys will burn the net down. <laughs> Coach, speaking of the net, um, you know, it's frustrating to me to watch. Maybe I'm just not good at math um, or whatever high math they're using for it. You know, <laughs> you're sitting there and it's eighth, you're eighth. Uh, behind seven other teams in the league, you're six and three against those teams, three and two on the road. Do yeah. you think college basketball in general, uh, because I, I, I still do think the committee is going to be smart enough to seed you guys a lot higher. Um, yeah. Do you think college basketball in general has gotten too analytics, too much in love with analytics and I, you know, yeah, maybe not so I much with the so. wins? I, I do. I think, I think the human element to it is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's six and one half dozen the other though, because the human element Someone someone told the world in September that we should be the last place finishing team in this conference. Right. That's what someone told the world. And so if you had never seen us play a practice, you looked on the casual fan. Well, let me see who's going to what the SEC looks like. OK, Tennessee should be really good. South Carolina should be. Oh, terrible. OK, they're terrible in my mind. And so the human element is is affected by that. Right. It just is. Um, but the human element also allows you to use your eyeballs to 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 overcome some numbers that say that Utah State, for example, is that much ahead of us in the net. Some of them are crazy. Dayton. I look at I look at who they've played. And so, all right, well, here's your non-conference schedule and here's your overall schedule. Non-conference versus regular schedule matters until. The season's over, right? At this point, who cares what our non-conference schedule was? We had to go to Alabama. We had to go to Tennessee. We had to play Tennessee back here. We had to go to Arkansas. We had Kentucky at home. We had A&M. Well, I can guarantee you New Mexico has none of that, right, based on the league that they're in. And they can't be penalized for their league. I'm not saying that. But they can't manufacture in any way, shape, or form the types of games that we've had to play on a consistent basis in this conference. So let's stop talking about the non-conference versus the conference. And at this point in the game, that that's great in December. You talk about non-conference versus conference. But at this point, let's look at what did you do over the course of 31 basketball games? Who did you play? How did you fare? And and I think I think we lose that based on the way the metrics of this thing are. But I, I think the human element has to be there so that you can override because some of the numbers just don't make sense at this point. If you look, not to go on the tangent, but if you look at the net, find any high major team that's anywhere around where we're ranked in the net that has anywhere near the types of losses we do. We have six total losses. I bet, and I don't know this for a fact, I haven't looked at it today. We have six total losses in a high major league one of, if not the best, but one of the best conferences in the country. Go into the net and see who else high major has a similar amount of losses, and I guarantee you they're in the top 15 in the net. And then the teams that will be around us that are high majors will have 12 losses. 12 <laughs> losses. I don't care who you played. At some point, you have to win the games, don't you? At right. some point, you have to win the games. Dr. Yeah. Naismith invented this game. They didn't say who's the prettiest, who plays the prettiest. It's who has the most points, right? That's yes. That's, that's basketball. You know, that's it, basketball. Just, yeah. it frustrates me, game? but I, I, I do think the committee's going to overlook that low net ranking. And and who knows? You get a few wins in Nashville, this crazy thing could all of a sudden decide yeah. you're boom, you're up there. Yeah. So it, it's and it hurts you by the leagues too, right? Because you think about it, we're the 15th ranked team in the country. We've been ranked for the last six weeks, right? And so someone beats us at their place, right? And it's a quad two. It's yeah. a quad two win or loss, right? It's a quad two win if they win a quad two loss. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. While Michigan State, right, 12, 13 losses, whatever it is that they have at this point, if you play Michigan State at your own place, you're getting a quad one win. That's wild to me. I mean, that's wild to me. And so then everyone else feeds off of that. So anyone that beats Michigan State at their own on their own home court, right? 
Well, Iowa gets a quad one win because they beat Michigan State. Well, Michigan State's not the fourth team in the country like they were predicted to be, right? And then they never got really – they they never really deteriorated that much based on that first initial ranking. All right. I, I, by the way, this is SEC Coach of the Year, Lamont Pierce. You woke up today as Coach of the Year. Did, did, have you even thought about that yet? Or That's has what it, happened, yeah. It, well, yeah. Not yeah. really, but it was hard to get so many text messages. People are, people yeah. are good. People, I got a lot of support. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, you know, it, 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 it's humbling. It was funny when I first got the job. One of my friends texted me and he said, "He said this is crazy. You're going to be going in there trying to kick John Calipari's rear end, <laughs> and like, and you have two years <laughs> later, you're the national. I mean, national. You're the conference coach of the year. Two year, two two years later." That's very humbling. That's very humbling. Um, and two and zero against Cal, by the way. Uh-huh. Two and zero against, against Cal. Cal. That's right. Let's yeah. not forget that. Let's not forget that now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I'm not letting that win in Lexington last year go. I'm not letting that one go. <laughs> no. But yeah, it's it's crazy. Coach uh, Kerry Rich, uh, I've known him for years. Obviously, yeah. you guys were introduced when you got to Columbia. Uh, yeah, I know he helped Frank a little bit, but was not on staff. You know, I kind of look not only at you know the the portal guys you guys got and the recruiting, but you know guys like Connor, uh, Colin Murray, Bulls, Zach Davis, in-state kids. You mm-hmm. know, just how much better Zach's gotten, and, and how yeah. much more you know fluid uh, the, the the in-state group is, and and all that. How, how much has he kind of played a factor uh, yeah. in in your success? Well, Kerry's been instrumental in a lot of this stuff, like. There's probably never been a person that's behind the scenes more and, and wants no recognition or acknowledgement for what they do that has helped more um, than him in my experiences. And so uh, he's a tremendous asset. He knows everyone. Everyone knows him. Um, he played here. Uh, he's he's South Carolina through and through. Um as a as a former player, as a as a, a a connector of people, he does a tremendous job with that. I think he's been instrumental in. There are a lot of different groups of alums from different eras, and and I think he's connected to the vast majority of them and has been able to pull those groups together. Um, uh, like I said, all the local kids they know him, and their parents and families know him, and so he's been a he's been a real asset. Um, not only in the acquisition of, of, of human resources, but also in just when these guys get here. And, you know, I think people trust, they've gotten to know me also. Um, yeah. I'm not the worst guy in the world when it comes to <laughs> managing their, their, their precious cargo. Um, but I think there's an immediate trust factor when these local people know that Kerry Rich is on our staff, that, how they're going to that, that their son is going to be taken care of in a specific way coach i know i know we're getting up against it here and you've you've got much more important things to do than to sit around yeah, here no, and no, i'm good i'm good trust me I, we're good I, okay well i you know we, we would keep we'll we will keep you all day if you if you want to do that but uh one of the guys that that jc just mentioned was colin murray boyles we we're talking to pat bradley last week and he said look this guy's beyond colin murray boyles he, he gets initials now he's just cmb cmb um, because of what he's turned into yeah. and he's starting to pop up on draft boards, which is yeah. great, great for him. Great for your program. Yeah. So you're his coach evaluate yeah. Colin Murray boils. I, I, he has about as high of a ceiling of any player that I've ever seen. Uh, and that's saying a lot because he's achieving right now, but I'm, I'm telling you when I think about where I, where he can get to as a player, there's not an aspect of the game that he can't affect. I mean, he's explosive and dynamic physically. He's tremendous laterally. His instincts defensively, especially are, are unparalleled. I mean, really, really, really good instincts. He's got some of the best hand-eye coordination I've ever seen um, on a person. Um, He's going to be able to shoot the ball as well. He's got good natural touch. Uh, He's a good passer. He sees things. Um, He's going to be able to, I told him, you know, he came out shooting a couple threes, and I said, "Hey, one day they're going to be. We'll be drawing up plays for you to shoot threes. It's not right now, which is why he's backed off of some of that. But one day he will. He's got a tremendous, tremendous ceiling. And so, m- my goal would be that you know, come back. Let's have an incredible uh, uh, summer of hard work, and then 
Yeah, I hope that's the last I see of you for a while. I mean, maybe you're off to, to bigger and better things at that point. So that's what I want for all of these guys. If they have the opportunity to go, they, they always should go if it's a great opportunity for them. But, you know, while they're here, I'll try to help them. But Colin, CMB as a big, 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 big time. I don't know if I use enough bigs on his ceiling. It's incredibly, incredibly high. Yeah, I the story that Derek told us, and if this story is wrong, you, you you take it up with Derek. But this is the story that Derek told us right. a couple of months ago that when Stephen Clark was still in the lineup, that he went into your office. It, it, maybe you can take it from there and basically said, I, I think yeah. he's ready to be in the lineup. Yeah, okay. yeah, no, no. It was it was unbelievable. So Stephen comes in. My office door is always open unless I'm on a podcast or something like this. But my office door is always open, and guys will trickle in here from time to time. Sometimes we'll watch film. Sometimes we'll just chop it up about nothing. And, and so when Steven came in, he's not the kind of guy that normally just comes in just to, you know, talk about what he had for breakfast today. So I thought maybe something was up or whatever. And he starts in, he's just shooting the breeze. And then he goes into on his own. He said, hey, what do you think about uh, moving Colin into the starting lineup? Wow. And, you know, I asked him why. And he, and he had some really good reasons. And he said he thought, hey, I think he's I think it'll be good for him. I think it'd be good for our team. You know, he's grown and all that stuff. I just where where does that happen? Where does that happen that somebody comes in and, and forfeits their starting role to a freshman? Uh, I'm telling you, it was a, a but that's who our team is. That's who our team is. That's a big part of the reason why we've been able to do what we do. But uh, what a mature, mature conversation that was and for him to do that. And then and, and he still got super high energy does Steven when he's helping and coming in off the bench and doing his thing. And so, but that was, I thought what a selfless act uh, to be able to even make that suggestion. And, and Coach, it, uh, you took the suggestion. You, oh, that sounds good. I'll, I'll throw him in the lineup. You're on the bench or, or yeah, how the no, conversation. It didn't, take, it didn't take long. I mean, right when I, that day started out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but yeah, no, no. We, I, I'd been thinking about it anyway. You know, I've been thinking his minutes were increasing. He was getting better physically mm -hmm. and, and um, but because uh, I had mentioned it to one of my assistant coaches and I immediately the same day I mentioned it to one of my assistant coaches. And so immediately I pulled that guy. I said, you told Steven, didn't you? He said, what are you talking about? And I said, Steve just came in and, and told me that he wanted to see what I thought about Colin moving in the starting lineup. We couldn't believe it. Um, but uh, wow. but yeah, big, big time stuff. Well, one last thing for me, Coach, you know, when Steve Spurrier was here coaching football, he always talked about, like, to do things for the first time or the mm -hmm. first time in a long time. No South Carolina basketball team on the men's side has ever won 25 games in the regular season. Check. Uh, since the 18-game schedule in the SEC, no South Carolina team's ever won 13 games. You're one of two South Carolina teams in history to win seven SEC road games. And you're the only second-year coach in South Carolina history – to lead the program to the NCAA tournament by your second year. I don't think there's been a first year to go. I think there's been some NITs in there. You know, what can you say about, you know, when you came down from Chattanooga, that was a long build, you yeah. know, five-year build. You probably didn't have the yeah. portal and all that. You guys certainly yeah. – I watched every yeah. play of your game against Illinois, heartbreaker. But uh, yeah, you, did you imagine when you came here that you would be accomplishing all these first? And, and, and are you somebody that likes to, to accomplish first? I mean – it sounds like a mic drop moment after you said all those things there, <laughs> doesn't it? But, um, yeah. but I'm, I'm, yeah. it's, it's, it blows my mind that we were able to do a lot of those things. You know, I thought we were year three because at Chattanooga, we didn't have the portal. Um, and you had to do the old fashioned transfer and sit. Remember way back then? Yeah. So we had a couple guys do that. So year three was when we made the jump. We had a similar year three there to my year two here uh, in that we had lost 21 games in year two at Chattanooga. And then we turned that to 20 wins in year three. Well, that was the year when the sit out guys were coming back through and a couple of the young guys that we had now knew the system. And so and then from that point on, we went 20, 18 and 27. Now, the 18 was in the COVID year when we played seven less games than normal. Certainly we would have won 20 games in that year. Um, so I thought, I thought we would be and hope that year two here would be similar to year three. I thought we could get to 20 wins. I did. Um, but to, 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 to think that we'd do 25 in the regular season, um, that was, it just was, 
it's amazing that that's happened. But um, the real challenge was not to do all those things for the first time. The real challenge is can you back them up and do those things again? That's the mm-hmm. real challenge. I think if, with, we've had tremendous pockets of success here at South Carolina. We, there hasn't been sustained. It hasn't been sustained for whatever reason. It's a challenging job. It is. It has been. Historically, we'd have to admit that, wouldn't we? It's been a yeah. challenging basketball job. And so the real challenge, the real challenge is what can we turn this into? Um, and everyone likes to make the comparisons to Wisconsin. And we don't play offensively like Wisconsin, believe it or not. Um, some principles are similar, particularly on the defensive end. But here's here's one thing that is also similar. They went 42 years without playing in an NCAA tournament. Now, you can't imagine them not being a part of the NCAA tournament, right? You just can't. They've always done it. They went 42 years without being a part of the NCAA tournament. That really is the challenge here to see if we can make this something that is sustainable. What? I think it's the whole key to the program, yeah, because everybody's had a big year. Just uh, Frank, yes. Darren Horn, you go back in time. Everybody's had at least one, two yeah. big years, but sustaining it uh, – you know, and I, I don't. The style of play is so good. I I kind of have a lot of hope this time because it's so different yeah. than what you see in the SEC. I kind of have it's a lot so, of hope too. Yeah. We're on the same page with that one, bud. Yeah, <laughs> I'm re- I'm ready to roll. <laughs> I, I, I was on the talk show earlier talking about. <laughs> it's it's. Been, I can see how convinced he was. Very convincing, wasn't he, with that statement? Go ahead. Yeah, he nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? So why? Okay. Why did you, you mentioned the challenge? I mean. <clears throat> I think there's a lot. I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, right? But and there, there's probably a lot of guys that would have looked at this job and said, yeah, Frank yeah. couldn't get it done. Fogler yeah. couldn't get it done. Dave yeah. couldn't get it done. Why? Yeah. So why, why did, why are you here? Why do you want to be here? What was yeah. it? Yeah. You know, I thought, I'll tell you what really helped it was my years in Chattanooga. Um, not only being in the South, right. And being in the footprint of the, of the SEC and being familiar with, you know, uh, Tennessee was right there, and obviously Vandy was there. Um, Ole Miss and Mississippi State were pr- relatively close to there. So um, it just was, it just was. I think the familiarity with that, combined with the fact that I felt comfortable doing a rebuild, I did. You know, and you can't, yeah. you can't ever say at this level you feel comfortable doing that unless you've done it. And I had done it before. I also. I think another thing that played well into it is that some guys have always coached the best players, right? Uh, no disrespect if anybody's a Duke fan or, or whoever. If you're an assistant at Duke, you've always had the best players. Like, let's call it what it is, and that's not to diminish what they achieved there, but you've had the best players. So I think when you go get a job when you're, that's, that's, the, that's got the name recognition – or the tradition that you're not going to probably have the best players, that can be difficult. Mm-hmm. I've won a lot of games without the best players, right? That's kind of been my MO. And then the, the, the best players we had, we didn't recruit the best players. We developed the best players, right? We got some guys on our team, Colin Murray Boyles. We've helped that guy develop. Now, God helped him be who he is also. Let's not kid ourselves. But, you know, he didn't have an offer from – South Carolina before I got here. He didn't have an offer from Clemson. He had no high major offers, right? Um, and so that's part of my plan is to develop guys and to see some things and and to do it with guys that maybe, you know, Kentucky would never take. We've got a signee from the state of Kentucky. I'm sure they never called him one time, you know? <laughs> and one day that kid's going to be – and you think that kid doesn't remember that? And one day that kid's going to be out there doing his thing, you know, uh, at Rupp Arena. And so that's been my philosophy. That's how I've done it. And then one day, if we do enough, maybe I can. I'll put my name in a hat with some of the with some of the big dogs on some of these kids that are maybe from out of our region. You know, you can always do it in your region, but still, even you know, you look at guys like the kid from Lexington that's going to go to Texas, right? Like they're hard to get when a kid gets to that level. It's hard to convince that kid to come here. That's the that's where tradition comes into play. Name recognition name recognition for these recruits and families it's hard for them to stand on their own two feet and say well it's the sec i don't care i believe in myself i don't care where this team is i'm going to go there it's the pressure to say i have to go to kentucky or duke or kansas or you know you 
yeah. they succumb to that pressure. And so, you know, I've just done it a different way. That's been my blueprint. I think that's why it's really worked out. Well, now this is, by the way, two times in seven years that South Carolina will be in the NCAA tournament. Of course, Frank took him to the Final Four. Coach, we just got this uh, to our inbox from somebody you, you know quite well, Michael DeBates, your SID. For the yeah. first time in the history of the University of South Carolina's basketball program, you have been named the AP SEC Coach of the Year. Uh, we've had the coaches you know, vote this before, but the AP has also voted you as – as coach of the year. Congratulations on All that. Right. Wow. Uh, yeah, now, awesome. one one thing I think you're probably going to be a little frustrated with is yeah. the fact that the AP first team and second team do not list any of your players on it. Yeah. But you've, yeah. you've got some time in Nashville and some time yeah. in the dance to maybe prove some folks wrong on that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, that that's that's been that's been our rallying cry. Um, you know, the whole season is that, you know, people, when they hired me here, people probably said Lamont Paris, like, who is this guy now? You know, I grew up in the big 10 footprint. Maybe if someone there would have hired me, it had a different feel. Or if someone would have hired, uh, instead of me, someone from with an SEC background, that might've been, it might've been a little bit different. But, um, you know, I think as people have gotten to know who I am, what I'm about, what, what, what coaching looks like for me in development, I think those have changed. I think I think the city of Columbia, the state of South Carolina has has appeared to do a 180 in a lot of that. And so and we're glad to have them on board. Um, But uh, but uh, yeah, we it's it's just uh, we're just we're just doing our thing here, trying to trying to get the name recognition out there and and prove to guys that these guys are good players. They're going to think we got picked last maybe because of me and maybe it was because of me but primarily like i i joked with our guys about it right if you had i don't even know who's the top of the nba i know the Cavs are good this year again finally but the Cavs, <laughs> if if our roster was that of the cleveland cavaliers and they were coached by ronald mcdonald i don't think they would have picked our team last right so they the ap they are picking them last because of our players and what could be a better rallying cry than that to go out there and try to prove that it ain't it's not because of a play that i draw up it's not i won't ever let them you know they give me coach of the year that means that's that's humbling to me but at the end of the day i had zero points i didn't get one rebound and i didn't make one assist all season long you know these guys are out there playing and they're good players, and they're good competitors, and they are a good team. And I don't think anyone can dispute that. So uh, uh, we'll have some we'll have some more ammunition because nobody made the first or second team that they'll go out there and try to prove it again. Coach, you got the tournament. I know you are headed today to Nashville, and the, right today you fly up today or tomorrow? today 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 is Tuesday, right? Today. Okay, yeah, today's Tuesday. You'll, you'll fly up today. Uh, and then you will await the winner of Arkansas and Vanderbilt. Both are playing good basketball. You, you yep. beat both, but they are playing good basketball. Yep. Uh, and, and obviously, this this program's never won this tournament. Um, how, how how important is it to win the SEC men's basketball tournament? With of course, the next week you're going to be playing somewhere in the dance. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a, it'd be a tremendous accomplishment for a lot of reasons. I think one. I think you just want to be playing really well as you go into uh, the, the NCAA tournament. So mm-hmm. um, I think it would be it would be really nice to have that kind of momentum. You you go into the the uh, tournament on a win. Um, I think uh, from a milestone standpoint, we've got a lot of them along this along this path. Right, uh, getting to 16 games won was a milestone. That uh, that meant you were going to have a a winning record. Right, getting to mm-hmm. nine or 10 league wins, huge hurdle. That means you're going to have a winning in-conference uh, uh, record. Um, getting to the NCAA tournament, finishing in the top four, which we did, but didn't get the top four. We finished in the tied for a second, but we didn't get the top four uh, uh, because of the tiebreaker. But that was that's a huge accomplishment. And so winning the tournament is another one um, in terms of establishing your program that says, hey, this can be done. So when we do it again at some point, let's not – 
let's not, we don't have to lose our minds. Our expectations are changing because of some of the things that we accomplished. And this would be, this would be another one. If we could, if we could go there, play really well and climb up on a net and cut down a ladder would be great. Mm. That would be, it would be, it would be something. Kevin wants to know how your golf game is. How's your golf game? Non-existent for right now, but, um, <laughs> but that's in May, I, right? May. I will say this though. I will say this. i made a commitment. I said, if we have a good enough season this year, the golf game's coming back in the spring this year. So okay. I think we've gotten there. I think I'll play some golf in the spring this year. Um, I'll be doing some recruiting too. Trust me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make my way out to try to see if I can get back down to, I barely snuck in at 9.8 is my best handicap. And I count that Ooh. as single digit handicap. I know it rounded yeah. up is still a 10, but I count that as a single digit handicap. Uh, I'll probably play to a 15 right now, but, Hopefully, hopefully I'll play enough golf this spring that I can get it back down to that nine point eight. Yeah, well, so we we just need to go. Ahead. We, we're going to put him on the spot, and, uh, and if he if he doesn't show up, it's because he had prior obligations. But we got the Big Spur Golf Tournament Monday, April twenty second. Welcome to come play with us. Okay, well, like yeah, play come on out. Raise it's going to be at Fort for, Jackson. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. all right. Yeah, the the organizations. Uh, one of them is. I'll have to ask Whittle. Ask Whittle. You'll see Whittle before we do, Coach. Yeah. yeah. Ask, ask, ask okay. Whittle what the organization. Appar is apparently, there. Whittle is the only was the only guy that went out to Starkville with you. You know, I, I was like, wow. You know, it was a uh, Whittle works with me for the BigSpur.com. So yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it yeah. was good. But yeah, no, we'd love committed. to have you. So, He's you know, committed. John's the best. John's the best. Yeah. yeah. There's no doubt, yeah. Coach. We'll, we'll let you run. Do you, do you, uh, you you keep receipts? Is it like a, a food truck receipt or is it like a CVS receipt? How how long is this receipt that you that you're keeping? What, what what receipt is that now? You know, just all the folks that doubted th this program. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is no, this no, a no, CBS no, no, receipt? No, no, no. Or? No, this is like this is like this is a long receipt now. I mean, <laughs> like this, CBS. This is, this is this is this is you don't fold this one up and put it in your billfold now. That, <laughs> it's not that kind of receipt. You need a you need a you need a grocery bag for this receipt. You know? Okay. Right. So so trust me, we haven't forgotten. We won't forget anybody. <laughs> well, look, man. I we told Mike twenty minutes. We blew through that by twenty minutes. Sorry, uh, okay. But it's okay. That's okay, guys. We, I know really we've been doing this for a long time. I'm glad it worked mm -hmm. out. I appreciate you having me on here. Uh, keep spreading the word out there and for Gamecocks and all that is Gamecock Nation, and uh, uh, we love them. We got an incredible group of guys, and we're going to continue to keep building, baby. Well, there's going to be a lot of folks that are following you to Nashville, and then. Wherever from there, Pittsburgh, Charlotte, Memphis, wherever you end up, there's going to be a lot of Gamecocks. Behind. What you, what you're we'll, go, we'll play anywhere. That's right. This is <laughs> what you're doing is pretty wild. Seeing yeah. seeing this rallying cry around South Carolina basketball, you and Don collectively. This is it's been a magical run. Congratulations on all your success. We Thanks, hope to guys. have you back uh, sometime in mid-April after you wrap things up. All right. Take care.